Hello, Sean here. Mountains Garage. It's the end of the day, waiting for the school bus. And yes, do not adjust your set. This looks like a complete Turbo 400 bomb went off and I'm not done stripping yet. All I wanted was a plain vanilla, six bolt case, steel piston, the type of transmission that it seems like I've stripped hundreds of and I can never find the good ones. I keep pulling cores from my core pile, which my core pile is getting dangerously small. And I haven't run across a lot of transmissions to buy lately. So that worries me, but that's not what we're talking about. So I just stripped the transmission. It's a 73 CA code. That would be a 73 station wagon with a 400 small block. And that should have been a TH-375 transmission with the long tail shaft and a TH-350 size yoke. Clearly somebody's been into it and they've put a short shaft and a short tail housing on it. But what I found unique, it had good stuff in it. It's an 8 bolt case, 73 with a plastic vent. Most of the ones I find a steel vent until late 74 anyway, if not 75. This is the first plastic vent 73 that I've seen. And what makes it really unique is there is no linkage seal, just a machine boss and an O-ring on the shaft. I can't tell you the last time. I don't remember the last time I've seen one that had just an O-ring in 73. That is a weird case right there. That's the code, 73CA. And that's where the recess for the linkage seal should be. Instead, it just had an O-ring on the shaft. Very interesting. It has a thick flange. And a very beefy 8-bolt case. Nice and thick down here. It only had a 6-bolt pump. A shallow pan. Again, it's a converted TH-375 for sure, but it's got good stuff. See, aluminum pistons like you'd expect in the 73. Interesting. Just for reference, that's what I expect to see with a drive-in metal clad seal. Been a long time since I've seen one with just an O-ring. I honestly can't remember when. I think I was stripping cores in high school. This transmission, if you saw it in the background and happen to be curious, is in a LS swapped uh, foreign car with a ground clearance problem. So I, it has a trans brake internal solenoid. So I found this, you know, medium depth pan, about an inch shorter than a deep pan, to clear the internal solenoid. Originally, the gentleman bought, brought me a name brand TH350 that was absolutely destroyed inside and full of metal shavings and filings. I couldn't even get it apart. And all that stuff was transferred into this engine swap and this transmission ended up full of metal instantly. It hasn't been driven yet and it stopped working. And I'll include the picture of the pressure regulator, how the state it was in when I pulled the pump out. On the phone, I instructed him to remove the lower cool line and start it to see if pressure came out and no pressure came out. So I figured he either sheared the pump gear off or I had him pull the pan and then I saw all the debris, black oil, metal debris, and this transmission hadn't been driven yet. So that is an indication that it came out of the same cooler where the TH350 deposited its internals. Tragic. In a similar story, this Reed Case Power Glide was brought to me last summer because they briefly ran an unbushed torque converter in it and the torque converter deposited all its metal into the transmission. It didn't do any harm. I cleaned it all out. It's had three torque converters in it since, and one of them deposited a lot of metal. 
This time it did take a chunk out of the band. There was a piece of metal stuck in the band. It's not good for the pump and everything else, but once again, I've cleaned it out and hopefully they stop uh, transmitting dirt and metal into it. In the ultra glamorous celebrity life of a YouTube transmission builder, one minute you're painting a case, simultaneously cooking chicken. So the chicken was delicious and the paint job adequate. This transmission has an old Fabax decal on it. It just wouldn't give up, it wouldn't come off, so I kind of painted over it and then antiqued it back. And there it will live. Well, it's the middle of the next day. I decided last night things are rolling along pretty good. I would just keep working until this transmission was done. It was about 10 o'clock last night and I finished. It came out okay. It is an internal solenoid brake. I had one left over. The transmission specialty sold by JEG, so that's what I used. I just got more ATD valve bodies in. But sometimes on a short notice, I'll grab one from JEG so I can have it in a couple days. I probably installed 30 or more of the internal solenoid brakes. And this one was the highest quality one. I haven't, I didn't have to turn the solenoid wiring around and all the bolt holes lined up. It was okay. So, quick overview. It's nothing special. I use whatever random color I come up with. Again, this was a case with no seal, but I tell you, the O-ring is a pretty hot setup. I would be okay if they were all like that. They're not, but I must have 3,000 O-rings saved up because you never use them for anything else. But I always be sure to take the pressure plug out so it's fresh if you have to do any diagnostics. At the last moment, the uh, guy that owns the transmission didn't want a speedometer. And I always give fresh bolts everywhere. The tail housing... This happens to be a metric tail housing stuck on this transmission because at some point in this life it was converted from a TH375 to a short shaft 400. It's an odd output shaft as well. It had the O-ring groove without the threaded hole. I know they made them that way, but you don't see them that often. Usually if it has no threaded hole, there's often not an O-ring groove, but it's done anyway. Here's a good example. The threaded hole and the O-ring groove. No threaded hole, no O-ring groove. So I convert this to look like this. And I gotta show you my new trick. It's not really, there's nothing new or trick about it. But let me explain. For many, many output shafts, I would diligently machine off that bump, the O-ring groove, and a little bit into the fat portion, kind of like it is in the factory. The output shaft is extremely hard and hot on bits. I wasted a lot of good carbide bits. And then one day I was watching about you know, a grinder attachment for a lathe, so it's not unheard of. And I already had this shield on the wall, and now I chuck it in the lathe just like this. I don't even support the end like I would if I was turning it. I fire up the lathe, and I just hold my angle grinder with a new flat bisque, and it takes less than a minute, and I'm down smooth here, and I taper this back. It looks better than when I machined it. Perfectly smooth and shiny. Um, Diligent about I clean up the ways before I move the carriage back and forth to make sure I'm not going to hurt my lathe by doing that. But all the stuff goes against that and falls down. Saving myself at least 20 25 minutes per output shaft. So, because I was working late last night to finish that transmission, which 
is still sitting here and probably will for days to come, <laughs> but it's done. I came out this morning and found my bench again. I still have more transmissions to strip. My core pile is getting low, but hopefully I'll just fall into some more. I need to move them all anyway because I need the extent. I need the extension on the garage. I need to empty that bay out because I have a job to do in there. So I'll be doing lots of cleaning, but I feel good at least now I have a bench again. So it's Friday afternoon. I hope you can have a wonderful weekend. The weather looks pretty decent, at least here in Maine. Get out and do something. Start a new project. <laughs> Drag something home. Talk to you in a couple days.